Yeah. Now what? We're, we're live. live. We're live. That's it. So we're live right there. All right. Smile at the camera. Say hi. Hello, everyone. How you guys doing today? Happy Friday for everybody. Not for us because we're working tomorrow. So. I don't complain. I'm not complaining. So how's everyone doing? Welcome to the Friday show. That's right. It's yep. Friday between two and four. That's what we're trying to hook for here. We know a lot Hi, of you John. guys are maybe taking a late lunch, getting out early. So it's prime time to dog, check out some YouTube. Unless you're yep. in California, in which case it's lunchtime. Yep, yeah. What do we have? Yeah. So what we have today, like we told you in the title, if you saw that, is we have the new Alpine X-Type speakers. Mm -hmm. Now, they come in three different speakers along with a subwoofer. Oh, who cares? Yeah, they do have a subwoofer, but we don't have that yet. Uh, we have the 6x9 components. We have the 6.5 coaxials, and we have the 6.5 components. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and open these 6x9s just to give you a feel from them. Now, don't worry. We'll give you a full unboxing, review, and all that fun stuff later down the road. Yeah. Dinner time in England. Well, there you go. Fish and chips. Love it. What's up, Jason? Good to see you, buddy. All right. Jason, I watched the Camaro video the other day. That was cool. I love the whole moving thing. There you go. All right, so here you go. This is the new... Six by nine, it's an aluminum basket. It's a neodymium magnet that is mounted on the inside of the voice coil so that it's nice and small. So don't think, oh man, it has no magnet. It's neodymium, it's real tiny, it's a tweeter magnet. Yeah. This is the tweeter here. Um, I'll give you all the stuff that it's made out of in the unboxing. I read it last night, it was really late. So I'll, I'm just hitting the high points here. It has the same type of surround that the R type has. Uh, this is a microfiber cone. Um, but these are going to be really nice. This is the tweeter crossover. So this does not have a crossover. I'm guessing they're going to let this naturally roll off all the way up to its its natural roll off point. So, yep. and then of course your amplifier or radio will provide a bottom for this. Hopefully an amplifier, a new X-Type amplifier to be specific. The go. tweeter has two adjustments, um, negative or plus or minus three, zero, as well as on axis, off axis. You just move these little jumper thingies right here. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. If I was to comment on the crossover, it's a little big for what's actually inside of it. Yeah. Now, the tweeters are kind of thick, and that is because they have Alpine's acoustical dampening material put in the back of it here. So you have about this big old donut right here. Obviously, you don't need to if you're going to put it somewhere where that can't go. Now, as far as getting the tweeter out of this mount right here, you can do it. It's technically glued into place, but there are two little clips, and if you're careful, you can pull it apart, uh, and then you have a much smaller tweeter. However, the dome is totally exposed. Yes, this is Alpine. This is the new X-Type Alpine for those of you that are just coming in. We just got them in the other day. Like I said, we'll have a full unboxing and tell you all the specs and all that fun stuff later. We just want to let you know that if you've got an Alpine dealer in town and you wanted to check it out, don't worry about packing it up. That's going to be really obnoxiously, you know, you're doing this on the camera. Yeah. yeah. So those are the three things that are out. Pretty cool there. Of course, the amplifiers have been out for a while. The subwoofer is probably already out or coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, these are high-res audio. Uh, as you can see, denoted on the box right here, this, this, this little guy right here. Yep. Now... The reason why I point that out is because the new Pioneers that will be coming in shortly, we talked about last week on the show, are also have that same high-res audio logo on it. And since you guys want a news show, we're going to talk about that on the news show. So we'll go over a couple things on what that means, how it gets on the box, and all that fun stuff. That'll be the special report in the news after we talk about the news. Yeah. So for all you guys that are interested in what that is and you don't feel like doing the research on Google's, yeah. Then we'll we'll let you know. We'll do it for you. Off topic. The new Dodge cars have fake engine noise. How do I fix that? I have yet to run into a Dodge. We haven't. No, none of the Dodges have had fake engine noise no. at all. The only thing with the Dodge is that, you know, if you're going to pull the radio out, it is a load-resisted radio. So you do need some form of a load now. 
If you're just hooking up a high level to low level, you're not disconnecting any speakers, it's just a standard install. You have nothing to worry about. It's only if you're pulling all the speakers out and putting some form of a high level to low level in that you run into that issue. So I mean, yep. there's a ton of solutions for it, so it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, what do you think of the new Rockford Fosgate DR? I think it's going to be a cool piece. Obviously, it just started shipping. I, I read this morning that people were starting to get them yesterday. We'll probably get ours sometime next week. Uh, if Paul's even ordered it yet, we're Rockford and iData, so of course we can order it direct. We're direct on both. Um, we'll get it. We'll play with it. We'll show it to you guys. We'll talk to you about it because I really haven't seen anyone do a a, a review, so to speak. We've just right. seen the same damn pictures, and it's kind of annoying. So I want to get one in as quick as possible and, and pull it apart and unbox it and tell you all about it because I feel it's going to be a hot piece. I mean, the price point is amazing. So if you've got one of those cars that it's good for, yay. There you go. I think the, the downside will be is that a lot of people will want it and they won't it won't work in their car. So that'll be the bummer on it. But you know, hey, whatever. So what do we got? Uh, I know this is off. More off topic. But how many RMAs watts are in the fifth generation Alpine twelve inch? Uh, I don't think the wattage has changed on the new Alpine R-Types. But I will tell you this, uh, the video you guys haven't seen yet because it's, it's going to come out later. We just got done doing one in a Camaro, yep. which we put a picture up of the amp install on Instagram last week. We did a single 12. We did the PDX V9, the 500 watt portion, powering the new R-Type 12 in a ported box, just yep. an off the shelf, nothing special box. And he came back this week for a retune and Wow, holy Jesus. Uh, I don't know what they've changed on the speaker, but way to go, Alpine. The new R type is, that's a freaking serious woofer. Finally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you're thinking about getting a set of those, definitely get the new Red Stripe box because uh, they're, they're nice. They're nice for sure. Good All sound right. quality. Michael, um, so I set up my Maestro RR, but I'm not getting my tire pressure. So what you want to do is go to the website and make sure that's an option that is actually available to you. One thing, your car has to have the TPS sensors, which is the tire pressure sensors. Also, it has to actually report over the data bus system so that they can read it. So iData is, in the fine print, usually will tell you what it can and can't do. Sometimes it can and can't do certain things. Not every car is 100% compatible. Uh, like backup sensors is another big one. Some of the late model Fords. The backup sensor are on a totally separate circuit than the new model Ford, so you don't get backup sensors through the yeah. radio. So we run into that problem a lot, too. All right, John. Good work on the Pioneer and ADPRS. And, of course, the next one is the 42NEX. We've already actually done the 42NEX. So if you want to check that out, the 42NEX is already up. We did that a month ago, so you may have missed it. But if you go to the playlist that is for that, it's there. Uh, along with, we did the AVH... 390. So for all you guys that have the AVH 4800, 5800, 3828, last year's version of it, or 491, 391, all those radios are exactly the same. They didn't change anything. There's no difference whatsoever. So the video for the 390 will give you all of what the older radio, right. the, the 800 series radios will do. So if you want to know what yours is capable of doing, go ahead and check that out. Pioneer didn't change anything other than the model number. So the preamp section and all that all stayed the same. All right. Um, what radio do you recommend for a Jeep with an Alpine amp? Uh, that really is up to you. Um, Alpine, of course, has that new 207 WRX, which is the new Jeep radio mm -hmm. that comes with the side brackets. Basically, you're paying $120 for that kit. Um, it's a really nice looking kit. We'll get one in here shortly We had because we want to obviously check it out and see what it's all about. However, the number one Jeep selling radio that we do is the Pioneer 4200, mainly because it has a detachable face. People want to take that face off in the Jeeps, take it with them because they're parking it outside or whatever silliness. So we actually do a ton of 4200s for that reason. So if you're paranoid, check that out. All right, Quinn, um, this is the first time watching you guys live. Always wondering how long you guys have in team. Oh, so we were actually just talking about this earlier today with a car we just got done working on in the yeah. day. 
uh, YouTube guy saw us on YouTube, brought in his Porsche because we have the two Porsche videos up and he wanted us to work on his because mm -hmm. he felt comfortable. Anyways, you guys get the idea. I started the install bay here, We, I think we figured six years ago. Uh, Paul wasn't doing any installs. I came over here, I built this out, and it's evolved obviously over the past six years. You came on four years ago? Five years ago? Five years ago. Maybe five years ago, because yeah. yeah, he worked for another shop and we yeah. talked about this before. So we've been together about five years now, you know, working together for about five years. Yeah. I'm happily married for 22 years. He's got I'm happy. two years under his belt. So yeah. for all the other goofballs out there with those strange comments, <laughs> no, man. All right. Uh, our Pioneer IV flats are durable. Option for the low profile. Okay. The one thing about IV flats, I'll tell you this. It's a great sounding woofer. Works in a small box. It's an odd size, which I find yep. annoying. If you give them the power, not the 1,000 watts, 500, like a 250 maybe a piece, maybe 300 a piece. They're great. Anything over that, boom goes the dynamite. Uh, if you're looking for something that will handle more power, check out the Comp RTs from Kicker. Same, really nice sounding woofer this year. Yeah. So definitely might want to check that out. All right, Max, what single thing with a pop out screen impress you? Uh, Pioneer's new uh, AVH 3300NEX is the current flip out that does everything. It has Android Auto, it has Apple CarPlay, it has four volts of output, it has the new Pioneer preamp section. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, it has 13 band EQ, time alignment, auto EQ, seven inch touchscreen, motorization. So yeah, if you want to flip out, that's the one to have. And it's capable, yeah, it's cool. Check it out. Um, I went and listened to a full call class D four range. Is it good? Yes, it it's getting range. better sound voice, but not close to the class AB. Well, you know, AB slash digital is always going to be a debate that people are going to have. I feel has the high res audio starts to take place uh, and more and more of that becomes the norm. You're going to see the class D sounding better. Yeah. Uh, my personal favorite class D is the Alpine PDX series amplifiers. Um, but the thing is, is that fantasy of the class AB or the dream of an awesome class AB it's going away. Few and few manufacturers are making class AB amplifiers because they're too big. Everybody wants small. Uh, yeah, that's it's it's. So hopefully we'll see some high res amplifiers. You know, something that is you know 192 at 24 bit. That'd be really sweet because then it'll sound amazing. All right, uh, Mike. Hi. Do you guys know how was the best way to bypass the factory premium sound system in the Hyundai Elantra 2012? while retaining the factory head unit um yeah so for that one i think we've always just used the lc8i or c7i depending on what we ran into depending on how many speakers it has but yeah. um why not just replace the radio i mean it's a five-year-old car i get it but even if it has a screen you can retain backup camera you can retain factory usb you can retain factory aux you retain all the steering wheels so i mean the, the sound benefit might be in the, in the headache might be worth just going you could do something as simple as a pioneer 391 and just kill it on sound all right juan what's the base what's the best base box for an audi q7 the one it fits i'm gonna go with that yeah man uh 2014 hyundai santa fe uh, 2014, that's probably going to be a Skosh kit. I'm sorry, it's probably going to be a Metra kit. Mm -hmm. So go to metraonline.com and put your car making model in and you'll find the parts that you need. Uh, let's see, what's up from California? Dan G, thanks. 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the stock Infinity Stereo. I want to put a radio with the aux, USB, any recommendation? Um, yeah, I mean, that's no big, uh, you know, Pioneer has the new, the new Mechalus stuff. You're going to want to bypass that amplifier if you can. I mean, you can integrate into it. The main problem we've always had with those is whether or not the factory speakers are blown. Most of the time that car, the factory speakers are, are dead. So we end up doing a full replacement where we pull the radio and pull the amp underneath the back passenger mm -hmm. seat, loop it at the amplifier, inputs and outputs, and then put six new speakers in it. Um, 
Pioneer makes things, Kenwood makes things. I mean, those are, you know, Alpine makes things. Uh, but check out the new MVH stuff if you don't need a CD player. Those are some really nice things. Jason, uh, say let's go back to the tube amps. <laughs> yeah, well, you might need those up where you are. I don't want a tube amp in my car here in Florida. I don't need the heat. What's the best Bluetooth to RCA? Wow, oh, has 12 volt supply set up. So we have two of those uh, USB to RC adapter. Rockford makes one. It's like the uh, R. I don't know the model number off the top of my head, but Rockford makes one and iSimple makes one. We use oh. both. Um, you could go to their corresponding websites. Uh, Rockford actually makes two. They make these. They make one that is a cigarette lighter with an off jack coming out of it and a USB charge. They make a second one that is just power and ground in uh, a Bluetooth module with RC outputs. That's the cleanest one out of the two. The iSimple one is is a uh, FM modulator slash and or RCA output. So you have a couple extra wires. But check out the Rockford if you want the, the small, simple, clean one. All right, Chris, how can I buy bypass Android Auto on a Note 8? I have an app radio 4200. Okay. Uh, if you go into the 4200 and turn it to Bluetooth, so if you go into the 4200, Go to, I believe it's input output settings. The smartphone setup. Go to smartphone setup and switch it. It'll say iPhone other, switch it to other. And then it'll say like USB 2 and Bluetooth. something. And then the last one is Bluetooth. If you pick Bluetooth, that's going to shut off Android Auto. Yeah. So that'll make sure it's in USB. That Make sure it's not on USB. Yeah. Make sure it's on Bluetooth. And that'll shut off the, the need for it to want to do Android Auto. Can I connect another amp to the Kenwood XR660 DSP? Yes, it has four outputs. So it has it's a 10-channel processor built into a six-channel amp. So there's four RC outputs on it. So that's seven, eight, nine, and ten outputs. So yeah, and you can tell it to do anything you want on those outputs. So they can be an amp for more mid-range. It can be an amp for a subwoofer, center channel, whatever you want it to be. You just tell it you want those channels to do something, and they will. And you'll still get all the processing for those channels. So you just you don't need to worry about like crossover points or the, the, the amp is has a 10 channel processor right. built into it. All right, so Phil so no discounts on the 10 inch under units? Uh no. 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 I, I don't know if there's anything 10 inch Android units yet. I mean not Android auto units. No, but maybe white boxes. You know, but white we box, don't do that. You know, yeah, yeah I don't yeah, I, I think um, not power acoustic. Soundtree might make one, but we don't carry those guys. So all right, 2014 Santa Fe also want to retain steering wheel controls. Uh, check out the access steering wheel control interface for that one, yeah. or the iData. The, oh, the iData uh, might work too. I'm not sure about the iData. Right. I know the access will work. We I have, hate a, it, but it'll work. We have a video on how to do the idling maestro on the Jeep. I'm sure. Like we the do. process. Yeah, I mean, any one of the iData, we have a couple of different, obviously from the install bay videos, we'll have, there's a couple of them in there. I know there's a couple of Jeep videos. Honestly, that it's hard to remember, but yeah, there's we have several videos where we've gone through and showed you step-by-step -step how to program a iData piece. It might be in the from the install bay, or in, I'm sorry, install bay diaries, or from the install bay actually playlist. Um, SPT 31 GM won't work with the Bose system. Correct. Why are some good replacement speakers? SPT GM 31 with the Bose system. Why? Uh, what Bose system are we talking? Are we talking about the new GM Bose system? Are we talking about what, what car? Oh, it's a GM. So is it a new GM? If it's a new GM, the reason why it won't work is because the new GM's Bose system uses the most. And the only person right now making a most GM interface is Nav TV. It's six or seven hundred dollars. Pack introduced theirs earlier this year, saying, "Hey, we'll have this piece out," but they haven't started shipping on it yet. So that's kind of where that's at. Right. What was the other part of the question? Um, what are some, some good replacement speakers? Um, what's up, Dave? Um, hey, from Michigan. Hey, from Michigan. Yep. Um, I didn't make sure to add super chat. What? Yeah, super chat. I, I'll talk about it later. We'll do, man. We'll do, John. All right. I haven't turned it on yet. 
Why are your thoughts on the Metro DSP? Next. No, honestly, I have no thoughts on it. I, I've expressed this before. We're not big Metro guys. Um, the only thing, okay, honestly, the only thing that excites me about the Metro piece are the T harnesses that they're coming out with for the piece. We'll probably carry every one of those because I'll be able to use them to do other things in the cars. Like if I have to do a high level to low level, I'm not going to use their piece. More than likely, I'm going to use an audio control piece. Uh, but I won't have to cut the harness. So like you've seen us build the Ford harness before. We get that from Car AV and we solder it up and make it. Uh, they're going to make a harness that's already done. So we'll probably buy them just for those T harnesses. Other than that, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Okay. Uh, CDP, I have a great video for you guys. Okay. Uh, compare the three current before and I'm harnesses. I'm hard kit and give you the best honest option. The three current before the amp. I think he's talking about maybe like an amp pro, a metra, and the iData. Okay. We think about it, man. Yeah, that's a good one. All uh, right, do I need to base blockers and the Twitter speakers on the dash, Dodge Ram? Yes, you, yes. Need, you, need, you need base blockers. If you're doing a three and a half, you want to put a 4.7. If you're doing a tweeter, a 3.3, 2.7, a 4.7, something depending on your tweeter have. Tweeters all need some form of a capacitor on them. Base blocker, unless you're running active, which I'm assuming you're not. Um, so, yeah, everything needs that, that base blocker because the other speaker in the door is a 6 by 9 You have to cross over to the lowest common denominator if you don't cap the speakers. So, if you want the six by nine to sound like a three and a half, don't put a cap on it. Otherwise, you're going to blow the crap out of the three and a half to play low like the six by nine. Uh, Gasper? Jasper? Jasper. Okay, from Jasper Sweden. from Sweden. Love Thank the diaries. You, Thank you. Need to replace my Alpine. <laughs> Ty, wow. M Any ideas? Uh, hmm. Not an Alpine, that's for sure. Unfortunately, Alpine's not in that game. Uh, do yourself check out the new Phoenix Gold Eight. What is it called? The Eight Hundred Eight or something like that. Check out Phoenix Gold's new DSP processor. Uh, it's got a lot of fun stuff that you can do with it, as far as time delays and whatnot, and speaker channel independent. A lot of adjustments. Mm -hmm. You can also download the app to if you have an iDevice, like an iPad. Uh, but it is one of the only devices that you can use a Windows machine, a Mac machine, an iPad to set up and you can download the app and play with it full functioning app to play with it so you can get an idea of all the cool things it'll do so okay. check out the phoenix gold um which kind of unit do you guys recommend to uh, no way what kind of setup do yeah. you recommend for a 2012 ford focus yeah uh, that's that's kind of a broad question you want to replace the radio you want to keep the radio do you want to go just all, add a sub. All depends on your pocket. Eyes. Depends on how deep your pocket is. Yeah. Yeah, man. Which head unit do you guys currently have in your personal vehicles? Well, I have. Ooh. Oh, this is a good topic here. I have an awesome Chevy factory Camaro radio in my car that I'm loving to pieces. I really hate it. And he has an awesome G35 radio in his car. Yeah. It totally sucks. Um, we're holding off on his because I'm trying to, That's a, we'll talk about that later. Mine, I actually have the dash kit sitting over here. My real thing is I, I just, I don't, I don't have any one radio that I'm totally in love with. And I know that seems silly, but yeah. I just, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't know. All right. Let's talk about Lace. Uh, so. 2017 Toyota Tundra with JBL. Want to change it? Any suggestions? We have a video. Yeah, we actually did a full video on that truck specifically mm -hmm. where we took all the factory JBL crap out and put all new stuff in. So uh, we went Focal on that one. Sounded wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I think we did a PDX V9, yes. five channels. Yeah. And stuff. We put some Rockford P3 behind the seat. Uh -huh. And I think we went with a 4200 or an 8200 in that one. I, I don't know 40, if it was Pioneer 42. or Kenwood. You know, it might have been Kenwood in that. But uh, the 9904 is a really cool hot deck right now. If you don't need CD, DVD, check out the 7704. It's a little cheaper. Uh, the iData link connection is really nice for that car because you get a couple added features that you don't get in the radio from the factory. Um, but you can retain everything. Backup cameras, USBs, serial controls are all obtainable. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is nice. How do you guys sleep at night with those factor head units? <laughs> well, that would imply that I sleep at night. And I'm sure you guys can see from the post that we post rather early. So my yeah. schedule right now, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a new schedule because getting up early, staying up late isn't working. But uh, until I do, hey, three to four hours. Come on, Dean. Awesome. I know you want the Kenwood, the yeah, new yeah. Kenwood radio in Yukamaru. Okay, so the Ken yes. was really appealing Come because on. I really like the crash cam idea. So I'm thinking I like the 7704 yeah. because I don't need a media player of any uh -huh. kind. Although I want the screen of the 9904 because I want the capacitive touch. Capacitive touch is honestly so much better than clear resistive, which we did a video on. Um, so, but and I really like the crash cam. So the Kenwood is really appealing. However, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, the 107 Alpine, which don't hate me for this, but, but the wireless CarPlay and then just coming out of the radio and going into a processor really doesn't matter that it's only two volts and that the DSP is on my phone yeah. because I'm just using it for a media player. And we just did, if you guys saw our Instagram post yesterday, we did a we did the 207 and the 107 Amp Dyno. So those will start coming out here and we're not going to release them all at once. You guys just got the P80 PRS. So next week we'll have one. The week after that we'll have another. Um, so... That's other thought too is the whole wireless CarPlay thing. Uh, you know, I'm an Apple guy. Hey, sorry, it's me. I got the laptops, I got the desktops, I got the pads, and the, yeah, the tamp pad. Yeah, I got it all. The phone, the watch. So all right. it's appealing. All right, let's go. Uh, Tony, uh, 2008 Honda Pilot. What's good overhead monitor that it's around like 13 inch? Uh, are the Chinese RAM from Amazon are any good? No. So what you're going to want to look at is Vox, formerly Audio Vox, but Audio Vox movies to go makes great overheads. That's the brand we use here. We've uh, put a, a couple of the from the install base. No, no, stay away from that one. No, um, it's a great picture, but that's where it ends. Um, but the the Vox line of head units, we sell them, we put them in, and we have almost no issues with them. They're not that much more than the white box Chinese garbage. And yeah, so yeah, just check out the Vox movies to go line. They make a 10 inch and a 13 inch. They make them with HDMI inputs now, so you can screen share and do all that fun stuff. But yeah, check those out. And they're reasonably priced. All right, I have a 2016 Mustang and I wanted to upgrade the speakers. What size are those? I honestly don't I think, I think it's a 6.9 now. I think so. 6.9, six and a half in the back. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the only 17 Mustangs we've gotten in are just for a sub. We haven't had, no one has, we had the same issue with Camaros. When Camaros first came out, we really didn't do a lot of Camaros. It was really funny. Now we're doing a ton of Camaros because the Camaro is, that body style is now eight years old. So we're starting to see more and more Camaros. And Mustangs kind of fall suit. You get the first guy to get those Mustangs, they just want to rub it with a diaper. Yeah. They don't want to do anything to it. So, What's up, Texas? you know. Unlike the F-150 guys. Hey, and bringing up F-150, someone had made a comment uh, about the installed diaries. Where we, we, were, we love F-150s, okay? We love to work on F-150s. Someone had thought we didn't like f one No, we love, dude, we love Jeeps. We love F-150s. We love the Chevy big-ass trucks. We love all that stuff because we do them all the time. It's autopilot. It's great, you know? And, and everyone has them. So, no, no, we love doing those cars. We just have fun with it because... You guys pointed out to us that, you know, we do a ton of them, and we never really thought about it. All right. So any idea why when I'm playing music through the USB on the Kango DNX 773S, and I get a phone call, the music doesn't stop or doesn't pause during the call. It's kind of annoying. You know, I've, I, okay, I, yeah, I've seen that one other time, and honestly, I don't remember what it was. Um oh. I, I don't remember what it was. I, I, I've seen that before. It's, actually, I've seen it a couple times before, but I, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember what it was, man. Um, yeah. All right. Fro, what's the difference between the 9904S and the 9704S, other than the warranty and the preamp output? Uh, you got it right there. Supposedly, the 9904 has a better sound in it, meaning that it has the new updated sound package in it that they just built, but I find it hard to believe that the 9704 wouldn't because the 7704 has it too. So other than the voltage output, oh, and I think the 9704 is a single USB. So I, I think, think that's so. I think that's what it is, single USB, two-year warranty, four-volt or five-volt preamp output. Um, I 
don't know. It used to be that the, the Exxons were the only one with the shiny black trim ring. Oh, the 9704, does it have capacitive touch? It might just be clear resistive. Yeah. That might be the other thing that's different is the screen. So I don't have the cool internets in front of me because we're using it for this, I'd check. But I think I think those are the difference. We don't really do anything with the 9704. We don't carry it. So, But we do check just because people ask. Uh, all right. If you're someone, what? Right, you're a Tesla. Tesla. What recommendation will you make to upgrade an Audi Tesla? Uh, I got to be honest I have no idea. We have yet to, you know, other than going to the mall and sitting and playing with one, I have not seen a Tesla. So, you know, I've seen tons of pictures that other guys have done stuff to them, but I have not dug into one to find out. It's one of the cars that it's on the bucket list, but we just, you know, I don't know in this area, we just don't have people yeah. coming in to have stuff done on their Teslas. So I, I don't know yet. Yeah. All right. This six channel lamp. I'm running towards the Audi control. Uh, that's a good direction yeah. to lean in. The only other six channel, dedicated six channel that we carry uh, or that we have access to is the Focal. Um, and I got to tell you, I would probably lean more towards the Audi control myself. Um, for sure. Yeah. Unless I had that cool need uh, and I could do the, the DSP amp from Kenwood, in which case I'd do that because that's pretty cool as well. All right. What decent speakers for a 2012 Dodge Caravan? 4200 NEX, no arm. Do you recommend for a little better sound? Check out the Kenwood Exelon line of speakers. They're moderately priced and they sound great off of deck power. Uh, if you don't have access to Kenwood Exelons where you live, you can also check out uh, the CX or DX. And it's, it's CX, DX, I don't know, is it DX? CD? The, the yellow striped yeah. kickers are really nice too. Um, and then, of course, Pioneer has the TSAs. They have several different versions of those. They're pretty nice. That'll work well off Rough of the, right the deck power. All right. Automotive Guru. How's it going? Came to stream just right after installing some stereo stuff. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank so you for watching. We. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a wall between cars, and Paul's like, should I have him come in? And I was like, no, give us 20 minutes. Let us just go on and do our thing and talk to you guys. All right. All right two, more, two more questions. Make two them more good questions. this week. Make All them right. good. None of these silly things. 2014 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee PDX F4 PDX PDX F6 PDX M12. It's zero gauge. No, enough. no. Uh, okay, zero gauge is enough if you have a second battery in the back that you're then taking everything off of. But man, that's a lot of amp for just one zero gauge. I mean, you know, people ask us why we run multiple four gauge. Yeah. And you have three huge amps there. I don't. I don't really see the need. But okay. You can get away with it if all the amps, all the highs amps, are running at 4 ohm. So if they're doing their 4 ohm rating, you'll probably be okay. Uh, for that amount of power, though, I would recommend a second battery somewhere back there, in which case you'll be ultra okay. Um, but, yeah, we run multiple 4 gauge just because we don't ever want to have that issue of, did I run a big enough wire? But... Uh, if you get a, if you get a GMC Taran, what? He, why is he asking that? What is that? Brandon, everyone wants to know what's your net worth. Uh, okay. Oh God! Oh, I don't want to get into that topic. Do you guys know anything about fixing amps? No. All right. Uh, if I get a GMC Terrain or Chevy. Can you do a video on it? Uh, if we have it, we can do a video on it. I'm stupid, sorry. No, no, it's not stupid. It's an inside joke. That's a funny one. No, no, that's that's a funny one. There's nothing wrong with the question. It's 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 banter that the two of us do that you guys don't ever get to see. Remember, we work together six days a week, nine hours a day. And you guys get to see 20 minutes of it. So, <laughs> and only the interesting part. Uh, all right, is that good? Oh, all right, guys, we're going to call this a Friday. We got to get back to work. Yeah. Thanks as usual. All right, the last one. Oh, okay. Um, All right, go ahead. Honda. How do you retain? Cars. How do you retain the AUX and the USB on the Honda? Uh, that's a great question, um, and I don't have. Two thousand nine. Uh, I think we have a BB We don't have one. a USB for that one. The AUX is easy. Uh, I own no part of the store. This is one hundred percent Paul's. The only thing I own is everything in this bay. He All owns right. the walls. I own the equipment. Uh, other than that, I get a paycheck with his name signed on every every week, just like uh, I'm a working stiff, just like you guys. All right. 
Yeah. Okay, you guys, as usual, have a great weekend. It's Friday, so no video tomorrow because it's Saturday. I like to sleep in. Yeah. Um, yay for me. Bummer. Uh, we're out of here. You good? Yeah. All right. You guys have a great night, as always, or afternoon, and we'll see you later next time. Bye.